after creating the understated and very capable 330 GTC, Ferrari brought us its evolution and twin sister in 1968 with the Ferrari 365 GTC. The philosophy behind this easy-to-drive and comfortable two-seater came from the Super American Superfast series, also used in a shorter scale in the elegant 275 GTS convertible. The 365 GTC was an intermediate model lodged between the top-of-the-line 365 GTB4, aka Daytona, and the four-seater 365 GT2 Plus 2. The Pininfarina design came straight from the 330 GTC and was also built with steel panels and aluminium doors, trunk and hood lid. The chassis used was the same 2400mm or 94.5 inch short wheelbase unit with gearling disc brakes fitted all around as well as the independent suspension which gave the 365 GTC a composed ride. Like the 330 GTC, the front was an extrapolation of the 500 Superfast and the 275 GTS. But unlike this last one, the nose was extended and ended in a small front overlay crate grille surrounded by two thin chrome split bumpers, like on the 330 GTC. The side front fender's three slatted hair vents, also seen on the Superfast Series 2 and 275 GTS, were replaced by two screened black plastic hair vents relocated on the hood by the windshield. The very thin pillars gave a wonderful all-around visibility, which was accentuated by a comfortable upright driving position. The rear end didn't change and kept its cat tongue shaped tail lights that were placed just above the chrome split bumper fitted with overriders. And as usual, the traditional quad exhaust system underlined this clean back end. Ten old Borani alloy wheels were standard, but wire wheels from the same maker were available as an option. The interior was also retained with two main Veglia gauges and three annex dials under the same binnacle. This dashboard had plenty of warm tick veneer and was complemented by the traditional wooden Nardi steering wheel. The center dash had three more small dials including a clock, while a center console housed three round air vents which matched the three dials just above. A row of switches were placed in between including the now standard electrically powered window switch and radio. The traditional ashtray with Ferrari and Pininfarina emblems on it could be found next to the 5-speed exposed metal transmission gate. The main interior differences between the 330 and 365 GTC came from the different door panel armrest, the two additional round interior air vents on top of the dashboard, and the two vent sliders in the middle of the wooden dash replacing the previous single one. The Ferrari 365 GTC had two non-bucketed seats, but don't be alarmed, this sweet cruiser had other priorities in mind, with well-padded seats giving its focus on long, fast and easy journeys. To make your experience even more pleasant, air conditioning was available as an option to tame the heat coming from the large glass surface area. The single cam per bank front engine V12 was enlarged to 4.4 litre or 268 cubic inch. It now developed 320 horsepower at 6600 rpm instead of the 300 horsepower found on the 330 GTC. This allowed it to get to 62 miles per hour in 6.3 seconds with a marginally faster top speed of 151 miles per hour or 243 km per hour. Numbers don't tell everything though, because the extra torque of 268 foot-pound instead of the 240 foot-pound found at the same 5000 rpm on the 330 made the 365 GTC stand out as a bestial machine and was able to pull away far more willingly at lower revs than the 330 could. As in the previous model, the transaxle transmission set at the back for better weight distribution received a torque tube to preserve the drive shaft from wearing out too quickly, unlike the 275 GTS. Later on that year, in 1968, Ferrari introduced the convertible labeled the Ferrari 365 GTS S for Spider or convertible. The 365 GTS retained everything from the coupe aside from the rear fenders which had a very slight raised shoulder line that came down on a recessed trunk lid and at the end of the tail. And of course its fixed metal roof was replaced by a canvas top with a clear plastic rear window while a hard top could be purchased as an option. The 365 GTS was only produced until 1969 while the coupe was produced until 1970. Needless to say that with only 20 Ferrari 365 GTS produced, it quickly became a very desirable vintage Ferrari amongst collectors. 
For a long time, the 365 GTC had been set aside as a forgotten and bland Ferrari due to its less charismatic and automatic comparison with the godly gorgeous 365 GT before, aka Daytona, but everything about the GTC was mature and well-mannered, from the driving position to the perfect all-around visibility, without forgetting its independent suspension, disc brakes and 5-speed gearbox. And with its torquey and more powerful engine, this made the 365 GTC more popular than ever with newly awakened car collectors and car fans around the world.